Hello, my soccer universe. Let's talk series. Uh, I decided to make today an entire series of uh, video reviewing uh, last uh, weekend's action. And then we'll do a roundup of other leagues um, tomorrow. I think it works out better because there's so much happening series. Uh, hope you like my background. I was long this. Uh, shall I wear Milan? Shall I wear Inter? Even I decided let's wear Italy because it's all series. Uh, let's put the four four shirts of people of, of not people of teams that have actually something to play for right here so we have inter milan roma and fiorentina all of them are in there as we'll see roma not really but um it's more academic but all the others there is lots to play for um i did a lot of work i might not have it all correct but i think i figured out all the scenarios for the last match day but before we go to the last match, let's look at the results from the last weekend. We had started out with Udine against Spal. It was a 3-2 win. And with the other results, as we will see, this means that Udine is actually safe, which is pretty remarkable. However, Genoa Cagliari 1-1. That result puts put Genoa into real trouble. Sassuolo Roma also means that Roma is more or less out of uh, the contention for the Champions League spot. Um, but yeah, at least uh, they have a chance to uh, still get a Europa League spot there. They are in prime position. Um, Kievo, Sampdoria, 0-0, did not do anything. Empoli, Torino, that was a big one because now Empoli, due to the Genoa draw, Empoli is out of the rele relegation zone. And uh, if it wasn't for a last round fixture against Inter, would look actually pretty good. They work quite impressive against Torino. Parma Fiorentina. Parma with a win. They have the last match against Roma, so they needed to get this win against Fiorentina. They did get it. Parma is safe. Fiorentina, however, still has um, troubles ahead. Milan, Frosinone, 2 nil did what they had to do. It was not pretty. They needed to beat Frosinone to still be in contention for a Champions League spot. The chances would be much bigger if Juve would have beaten Atalanta, but Atalanta got, as I said, a deserved draw. However, uh, there's a second team that is now in danger of losing the Champions League spot, and that is Inter after losing 4-1 to Napoli, a game that I'm sure, given what happened uh, before Christmas, uh, Napoli really wanted to win this one and had extra motivation to uh, more or less get at Inter, and I'm not sure uh, how serious Inter was taking this game. I I don't know, I hope they I hope they did, but on the, on, on, the, on the other side it could also be that, okay, they say we just need to have this one little result at uh, against Empoli. I don't know. And then um, to kind of take off the entire madness, Bologna always now secure. They got a 3-3 draw at Lazio. I, as far as I, I remember, Lazio had a 1-0 lead at halftime. Then within a minute, Bologna turned around. Lazio equalized. Bologna had late equalizer by Lazio. There was an absolute um, crazy uh, sequence. I probably will, uh, will still need to watch the highlights of that one. That sets up another table as follows before the last uh, uh, match day. You win ahead 90, Napoli 79, and now uh, the first chunk of teams. The fight for the Champions League spot is Atalanta 66, Inter 66, Milan 65. Uh, Roma might have a chance, but if you look at the goal differential, they are really, really not there all that well. Uh, and as we will also uh, talk more, we have that Atalanta has the tiebreak over Inter, Milan has the tiebreak over Atalanta, Inter has the tiebreak over Milan. As for Roma, uh, Milan has a tiebreaker over Roma, and I'm not quite sure if it's away goals rule counts, then Inter has a tiebreaker over Roma. Atalanta and Roma played out two 3-3 three, three draws. And in both cases, uh, the first one was where Atalanta was at the very beginning of the season, Atalanta had a 3-1 lead at Roma, and the second one, Roma had a 3-0 lead at Atalanta, and it ended in a 3-3 three, three draw, so those were crazy games. As for the Europa League spot, I think Roma holds a tiebreak over Torino, not 100%, but I think they do, so um, Torino cannot get in there anymore. 
um, even if they could draw level with Roma. Uh, Lazio has their spot in the Europa League secured as their uh, cup winners. Sampdoria 50 so, uh, is kind of mid-table and then it's a very dense uh, bottom half. Sassuolo 43 safe, Spal 42 safe, Bologna 41 safe, Cagliari 41 safe, Parma 41 safe and now um, Fiorentina at 15th they have a positive goal difference and are still in trouble. I mean that's to me the staggering part here. 40 points plus 2 and they're not safe. Udine on the other side, 40 points minus 15, as we will see, is already safe. This was to me, the, uh, in, my re in my research today, the most surprising finding. Um, Empoli is now in the 17th safe spot, 38. But it's not, not quite done yet. And Genoa, 37 points. Um, Frozen only 24, Kievo 16. Those two uh, are set in stone. Now, the last match day. Let's just look at the fixtures and then we'll talk about uh, implications. Uh, we actually have two games on Saturday and uh, as, as you can see they divvy it all up. Um, I was hoping they play all, all at 3 o'clock but they clearly took out the fixtures that are not much to play for and then you have the nice evening where everything is to play for. Uh, Frosinone, Kievo at 6 on Saturday, Bologna, uh, Napoli at 8.30. And then 3 o'clock Torino Lazio is a nice game, but there's not much to play for. Similar, Sampdoria Juventus, nothing to play for. Sunday evening, Cagliari Udine, um, Fiorentina Genoa, that's a huge one. Inter Empoli is also a huge one because the, those two teams in different zones have much to play for. Roma Parma has nothing uh, really right, riding it on it anymore. Spal Milan uh, is 8.30, it's a must win for Milan, then Atalanta Sassuolo. Uh, is another one at 8.30, uh, which is kind of the weird one because Atalanta Stadium is re reconstructed, so they play in the Mappe Stadium in Reggio uh, that also Sassuolo uses. And what's even more is that the Sassuolo fans are forced to be in the away sector. So that's definitely going to be interesting. Okay, so let's talk chances and scenarios the other way around. Um, we have the following five games that are of interest. Here's the five. Uh, the first game is Fiorentina Genoa, which is kind of this head to head for uh, relegation. Um, we'll talk about more, but we basically have that Fiorentina has a 49% chance of winning that one, 27% chance for a uh, draw, and 24% chance for Genoa winning that. So Fiorentina, quite favored, uh, pretty normal result, uh, pretty normal odds for that one. Next one, Inter Empoli, uh, that's the second most interesting one uh, of those because this is Champions League spot plus relegation battle all in one. Um, should normally be a clear thing for Inter and that's what the odds actually reflect but it's not as clear as you might expect. We have a 73% chance for Inter winning, 17% chance for um, Empoli and only 10% chance uh, for a draw and a 10% chance for Empoli. Uh, the next game is Roma Parma, where Roma has a 71% chance winning. As you will see, Roma will need lots of goals, lots of goals. 17% um, chance for a draw and a 12% chance of Parma winning. All these are based on uh, the average of booking uh, of bookie odds. Spal Milan, Spal gets only 16% chance for a win. It has a 19% chance for a draw and a 65% chance for a Milan win. So uh, of all the favorites, Milan is, uh, except Fiorentina, but uh, in the Champions League, uh, Milan has the um, smallest chance of winning. And then the last one, Atalanta Sassuolo, very similar to uh, Inter Empoli, but Atalanta is even a bigger favorite, 74% chance of winning, 16% chance for a draw and only a 10% chance of losing. So um, that's uh, just the pure match odds. Let's talk scenarios and then uh, chances from based on those probabilities. And at the end, I want to also look at 538, what they say. Um, but I think 538 is a little bit too influenced by their model and the ratings they have for certain teams that might not actually reflect the realities of uh, that bookmakers often face. Still very interesting to look at. Um, 
As for relegation, I'm going to look at the bottom four teams where at the moment we have Fiorentina, as we said, sitting um, three spots above re relegation with 40 points and Fiorentina in the head-to-head -head, uh, in the home games has a 3-1 against Empoli and a 1-0 against Udine. Udine has a horrible goal differential, 40 points, but they, as we will just in a second see, they are safe thanks to head-to-head. -head. They won at home to Empoli 3-2, they played a 1-1 against Fiorentina and a 2-0 against Genoa. So uh, that helps them. Uh, speaking of Genoa, they I oh, know Empoli is the next one. Sorry, missing uh, Empoli. Empoli has 38 points, so they are two points behind those two. Um, one, -nil, one nil win against Fiorentina. That was a huge result for them. Still, Fiorentina holds the tiebreak over Empoli. 3-1-0-1. One, one. One, three against Genoa. And that means that, uh, we, as we'll see, Genoa holds the tiebreaker over um, Empoli. And 2-1 at home to Udine, uh, uh, against Udine. And then Genoa is the last place team. Uh, Udine holds the tiebreaker over uh, Empoli. Oh no, it's actually tied, but it doesn't really matter. Uh, it's actually tied in that case. Uh, so Empoli loses to Fiorentina uh, level, which doesn't really matter, uh, and loses to Genoa. So that's the downside for Empoli. Um, and then Genoa has a 2-1 at home at Empoli, 0 against Fiorentina, 2-2 against Udine. So uh, Genoa over Empoli loses to Fiorentina. Uh, nah, at the moment, this depends, of course, on all of the results. So they don't. Uh, uh, this is to be played for. But uh, Genoa loses to Udine. That's a biggie. And if you uh, would make a, a tail between those four, oh, no, that doesn't actually matter because you cannot have a four-way tie. You can have a three-way tie. And the three-way tie is that Fiorentina um, is a Genoa and Udine are level. This means U um, Udine loses, Fiorentina loses to, Gen to Genoa. Um, and at the moment, this would mean that at the moment they all uh, it, uh, that would mean they all would have five points, and then it's down to goal differential. Where at the moment, Fiorentina plus one, Udine plus one, and Genoa minus two. So even if Genoa would win only by a goal, still following me. Uh, that also means that Empoli has won. So even if uh, Genoa would win uh, only by a goal, then they are just behind Fiorentina. Uh, cannot do anything for Udine. In order to get beat on Udine, they need to uh, win to get past Udine. They will need to win by two or more goals, which basically, uh, if they win by two goals, this would actually put them ahead of Fiorentina. Um, but Udine is really un unimpressed by that. So however you do it, Udine is safe and therefore cannot be relegated anymore, which I think is remarkable. Uh, so there is a chance for Genoa if they beat Fiorentina and it happens that they are level on points with Udine. So Udine loses, then uh, a, just a win against Fiorentina will not help them. It's absolutely nuts. I, Hopefully we'll not get to the Kallier place against Udine. I hope there will be a draw and that settles that. If Kallier should win, that could be an additional factor when it comes down to goal difference. Um, taking out that scenario for now, let's look at the teams. Uh, Fiorentina gets um, relegated with a loss because it will be a head-to-head, -head, except then if the Udine part goes in. And it will be differently. And of course, an Empoli win is also needed. So an Empoli win and a loss. And that has uh, roughly a 3% chance of happening. So Fiorentina looks relatively safe, but they are not safe. And given their recent form, I actually think that those 3% three, 3 are kind of small. Uh, Empoli goes down if they lose and Genoa draws or wins. Thanks. Um, or if they draw and Genoa wins. That's the, where the tiebreaker comes into, into play. That has a 24% chance of happening and Genoa has the, um, is the odds-on favorite to be rele relegated. They get relegated with a loss, then it's over. And uh, if they play out a draw 
and Empoli gets a draw or a win, then they are also down. So 73% chance. So that basically settles relegation. And if we quickly look at 538, no, let's look at 538 at the end. Uh, see the entire table. Okay, that was complicated. Now, nothing against the Champions League spots. Uh, again, we have four teams in there. Four have a chance. Roma, the last one has only an academic chance, and we'll talk about this now. Uh, when, I look, when you look at the head-to-head -head table between those, we have Atalanta at home winning to, against Inter for one, losing at home to Milan 1-3 and uh, tying with Roma 3-3. Three, three. Uh, Inter played at home 0-0 against Atalanta, so Atalanta holds the tiebreaker over Inter. Uh, Inter wins at home to Milan 1-0 and ties 1-1 with Roma. Milan 2-2 at home with Atalanta, coupled with the win at Bergamo, Milan holds the tiebreaker over Atalanta. However, Milan lost 2-3 in the home derby against Inter, which means that Milan lost two games against Inter, and this was an imbalance that could cost them. Um, that, me, uh, that means Inter holds the tiebreaker over Milan. Milan also won 2-1 over Roma. Uh, at home and Roma 3-3 at home to Atalanta and 3-3 away, two very crazy games. Um, if you don't recall them, it was I think the second day of the season when Atalanta went to Rome, was quickly 1-0 behind, made it 3-1 at the halftime, Roma came back. And the other uh, the game in Bergamo was even crazier with Roma having a very comfortable 3-0 lead and then within 10 minutes it all falls apart. So. I wonder if I've heard that before. I cannot remember any game where this happened. 2005, that year doesn't exist. Okay, uh, Roma Inter at home 2-2. Two, two, uh, away it was 1-1 one, one, and I'm not sure if away goals count in the head-to-head. -head. If they do, then Inter would have the head-to-head -head over Roma. If they don't, then there's goal difference. This could be crucial. Um, I just couldn't find it. What uh, what counts here? I hope that the head-to-head -head does not uh, that the away goals in this case don't do not count. But who knows? Uh, it would make things easier because it would basically eliminate Roma. Um, and then Roma played one one at home to Milan. To cover the loss means Milan held holds the tiebreaker over Roma. So let's look at the table. We have Atalanta. Of course, ahead uh, with 66 points, 74 to 45 goals, which are goal difference plus plus 29. Inter 66, 55 to 32, also pretty good, uh, plus 23. Milan 65, worst goal difference. They have 52 to 34, which is a plus 18. And Roma 63, 64 to 47, uh, second most goal scored in this uh, here, but a goal difference of only plus 17. Uh, which could hurt them. Now, uh, before we talk scenarios, if there happen three-way ties, let's talk about it. A four-way tie is possible. Um, how is it possible? Uh, Inter and Atalanta lose, already very unlikely as we know. Milan gets a draw and Roma wins and there's a four-way tie between those teams, in which case Inter and Atalanta would win. Uh, no. Inter and Milan would win out. Inter would have 9 points, Milan 8 points, Atalanta 7 and Roma has 5 points. Um, there are three relevant three-way ties that could happen. The first one is Inter, Milan and Roma. How could that happen? Um, Atalanta uh, gets at least a draw. Uh, Inter loses, Milan a draw and Roma wins. In this case the last spot would go to Inter with 8 points to 4 Milan to th uh, 3 Roma. Um, if there's a 3-way tie between um, Atalanta, Milan and Roma, that one is that Milan wins because Milan holds the tiebreak over both of these. So Milan would win a tiebreaker there. Again, this would mean that Inter gets at least a draw, Atalanta loses, Milan gets a draw and Roma wins. So that would be the three-way tie there. And then an Atalanta-Inter-Milan three-way tie would mean that the top two would get the spot. All the others were that only the top one would get the spot. Uh, in this case, it's still Inter and Atalanta. Inter would win that uh, over Atalanta. Okay. All the tiebreakers taken care of. Let's talk chances. 
uh, or scenarios. Atalanta, Atalanta gets the final spot if three possibilities. They can win. That's the easiest one. And that's, um, as we saw, a 74% chance. Then they would be in for sure. If they play a draw, then it gets a little bit uh, more complicated, but still not that much. Then they need that either Milan draw or lose, or Inter draw or lose, which is a 9% chance overall. And then the last one is that they have a loss, then they need a loss of Milan or a loss of Inter, and they're still in, which is only uh, roughly 3% chance of happening, which gives us overall an 85% chance of Atalanta making it into the Champions League. They are the favorite to make it. Inter is very similar, except that Atalanta holds the tiebreaker, so it's not as easy for them. Uh, they get in with a win. Both Atalanta and Inter winning. Milan can do whatever they want. Roma can do whatever they want. The Dolls two are in. The two uh, Nerazzurri teams. Um, draw. If Inter play, uh, gets a draw, then they need either a Milan draw or a loss. Thanks to um, the head-to-head. Now nah, that doesn't even mean head-to-head. -head. They just mean a Milan draw or loss. Um, which is in 2%. Uh, no. So, sorry, in 6% chance, or then the Atalanta loss. So a draw and an Atalanta loss is a 2% um, chance. Of course, Inter wins 73%. So that makes that. And if they lose, they even have a chance if Milan draws or loses. So uh, if that overall, it doesn't look that uncomfortable, honestly, for those two teams. That happens in a 4% chance, and it gives Inter an overall 83% chance of making it in the Champions League. If you have calculated that 32% chance remaining, Roma's are only academic. Roma only has a chance if uh, they get into a tie with Atalanta. For sure, with Inter, I'm, I'm not even sure, but they need to get a tie, which means that Milan loses, which is high, 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 high land against Atalanta and Inter lose and Roma wins. That's the only one uh, where they have a chance and then it's down to goal difference. Uh, no, Atalanta or Inter lose, but not both at the same time. And then they need to make up goals, lots of goals. And uh, especially if they are a level with Atalanta, with Inter, as I said, I don't know about the away goals. It's complicated. Okay, let's talk Milan's chances. Milan get in with a win. And if Inter or Atalanta, Inter or Atalanta, or both, draw or lose, there's a 30% chance for that. It's not that small, but it's still not great, honestly. Um, or if a draw, then they need a loss by Atalanta and Inter to at least get a draw, because otherwise it's a three-way tie. So uh, that's also crucial, and that is a 2% chance, and uh, that's where the 32% are coming. Since there are two spots available, those probabilities need to add up to 200% and not 100%. Uh, not that's why it's a little bit odd. So yeah, Roma pretty much out of it. It's only academic. It's realistically only between Inter, Milan, and Atalanta with the Inter and Atalanta having the much, much better chance than Milan. Uh, if you look quickly at 538, where Milan doesn't have a high rating um, as compared to the others, and you might argue whether it's correct or not, I have, have a feeling it's not as far off as they say here. They give Milan only a 21% chance of advancing, Atalanta 91 and Inter 89% chance. And if we look towards the bottom of the table, we see the 2% for Fiorentina. I said 3% before. Uh, they actually have it more even. They say Empoli is the also favorite, 53% chance of being relegated, and Genoa 45% chance. I'm not sure if they played through all the scenarios that we have. Um, I actually would just hold them made here more, but you know, let me know which ones you trust more. Uh, I spent at least an hour figuring out all these scenarios, but it was a lot of fun. I think this last match in Italy is absolutely nuts. Uh, it's probably the best last day of the season in all of the leagues in Europe that we had so far. Um, Spain was in there, uh, but there it was all the European spots. Uh, 
there were only four games. Uh, Germany was interesting too. I mean, I give it to Germany because there was a championship on the line, but they didn't have this urgency with the relegation battle. Here it's kind of top and bottom and they're intermixing as well. So um, definitely very, very interesting uh, scenarios here. I'm quite excited about the whole thing. Well, let me know what you think will happen. Uh, will we see Atalanta in? That would be a sensation. Who do you think of the two Milan teams will make it? Will they both make it? That could also be a scenario that might... I don't know if it would be good for, it, for Italy, but it definitely will be good for the two Milan teams to make it to the Champions League. Um, what I know is that if Milan should get punished uh, to the financial fair play, which is very likely if they don't make the Champions League, Milan or Reset will accept not playing in the Europa League and basically withdraw the need to have the books in order and really pump something in there. Um, so yeah. I don't want to say it's Champions League or bust, but I think we will see an entirely different Milan squad. I'll be interested. It will be interesting to see. I will wear one of those two jerseys come Sunday evening. Which one will it be? <laughs> okay. Let me know your thoughts on all, all, all of that. I am hope it was somewhat easy to follow i know it was it's not it's a lot to uh take in um give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video and found it informative subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like these and i will talk to you soon bye hey there i really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did here are some videos and playlists that might be of interest to you too also please consider subscribing to my channel as it will give you all the updates on my channel all things my soccer universe and with that i want to wish you a wonderful day